guys, welcome back to another Fly Tying Tuesday with Avid Max. My name is Max, and today we're gonna to be tying a peanut envy with a fish skull head. Uh, so I'm swapping out the cone head, which is on the traditional peanut envy, uh, for the fish skull. You know, it's got eyes on there. Um, I think it's super important that when you're fishing streamers or tying streamers, that you have some sort of eye. And then another trigger point, um, like mixing colors, you know, having a little bright spot somewhere, maybe a gill plate. You know, all those things really into play into fishing a streamer. Uh, so in the vise, I've got a Firehole 860. Uh, this is very similar to the 811. Uh, just got a little bit wider gape um, and probably a little bit shorter shank. Um, so like this hook, you know, it's a heavy wire. Um, really nice fishing streamers, not gonna lose the fish uh, because of the barbless, but they do come out really easy and I think it's a little bit easier on the fish. So uh, to get it started, I got some Vivas in the 6 aught in the brown. And uh, when I'm using, uh, or when I'm tying streamers, I really like the Vivas because it's a little more ropey. I think it holds material very well. Um, so get that thread started down the shank here. Uh, so today the colors are gonna be kind of like a brown and a ginger. And uh, it's just a good color combination. You know, it can uh, kind of be a lot of different things. It's bright enough to where it could be, you know, a flashier bright uh, bait fish, but it could also be, you know, dark enough to be like a sculpin uh, where you kind of see the, the white on their belly. So, got my thread on there and uh, started out. I'm gonna grab a piece of uh, ginger Marabou blood quill. So selecting my piece here. I'm gonna stop it way short of the eye so that I have some room to work when I do do my palmer. I'm gonna snip out that. And then I'm gonna grab a piece of brown here. Same thing, another blood quill. Kind of stripped it out a little bit. And uh, this is gonna go on the top side. So about even length. Got that positioned where I want it. Can make some securing wraps down onto the shank. Go back. And same thing, keep it all together and work up to where I snipped out my first piece of ginger. Take that piece out, clean it up just a little bit there. You can take through my dubbing brush and just make sure all those fibers are laying back nicely. So uh, I'm sure you could just fish this and you know, you'd have success with it. Um, do all the extra steps um, in here just so that it has more bulk and body uh, when you're fishing it. Uh, so it pushes more water and uh, fish really uh, gravitate towards, uh, when you're fishing streamers, you know, they're gonna feel it in the water before they see it most of the time. Um, so as soon as they feel that pulse on their lateral line, they're gonna use that as a, kind of a way to search for their food and um, really take advantage of eating a big meal like this. So now I'm gonna grab some schlopping in the brown. And the schloppen is the fiery brown. So, got that hairline. So when I'm selecting this, you know, I wanna try to grab a little bit smaller feather um, for the back side than I do the front. So, you know, that's a pretty good, pretty good option there. And then I'll usually select my front one as well while I'm down here. It's a little bit thicker. Um, and that's just so I have a little bit more of a taper building up to it. Up to behind the head there. 
So I'm gonna grab it at the tip and I'm gonna kind of flare it all down. Kind of see how malleable all these feathers are. You know, it's not like a saddle hackle where it's gonna be really stiff. They should be kind of like floppy and loose. So I'm gonna tie that down and I'm gonna make sure I tie the V downwards to the shank of the hook. And I'll snip out the front little piece of feather there. I'm gonna leave that off to the side. Now we're gonna do a little dubbing loop and uh, I'm gonna throw some UV tan ice dub in there. So this is real, real cool stuff. Got some nice shimmer to it. So with my dubbing loop, split my thread in half and then come back up onto the hook shank. And uh, some people like to wrap, you know, around it or, you know, make some like loops around your dubbing loop. Find that if you just start it at the, kind of the front of the shank or the, towards the eye of the hook, you know, you can still just work down and it builds a nice little, uh, you know, V going to the shank. We'll take a little bit of low tack wax and uh, throw that on there. So it holds my dubbing in place a little bit better. So it'll be fairly slim with this guy. Pile some in here neatly. Just wanna make sure it's even. So this uh, hook shank's fairly short, so I don't need all that much. I'll take my dubbing spinner and this up a little bit further. And I make sure I don't have any material trapped in here. And then I'm gonna spin my tool and make sure none of these pieces of marabou get caught in there. So let it spin for a sec. Go back in with my dubbing brush and just rough it up a little bit. Go ahead and start working my way up. You know, you can use the cradle, um, but if you're going clockwise, it should just keep spinning your thread right behind the eye there and it just saves you a little bit of time so now I can capture it and work it back a little bit give myself some room for that marabou up front snip it out And with time streaming, I just want to make sure that I always leave room right here so that I don't crowd the eye. So work that back a little more and kind of rough it up again. And uh, when I'm wrapping my uh, schlopping going up, I want to try not to trap a bunch of fibers. It's going to happen, but I can try to, you know, work with it. So I'll start making my wraps going up here. Like I said, this just really creates a lot of bulk in the fly, pushes water. And then I'll grab my stem here, capture that with my thread, make a couple wraps in front and behind, and then I'll snip out my feather. I'm gonna blow on everything, make sure it's all going the same direction. Pull it back even a little more and go. So there's your like, you know, woolly bugger pretty much. I like, I like tying the schlopping buggers as opposed to just like the saddle hackle. I just think it, as it moves in the water, it pulses a little more. So you could fish it just like this, you know, if you cleaned up the head a little bit. So I'm gonna grab another piece of the ginger I'm going to tie this in right 
next to where I finished schlopping. I'm gonna work that back and then trim out my puff up front. And I'm gonna start palmering my marabou. I like the palmer because I feel like it adds really nice movement. It's kind of a pain because you trap all these fibers in there. It's not the easiest step, but I think it's definitely worth it to like cover the whole fly as opposed to just tying it in. Okay, hold the stem there. Make sure everything's kind of pulled back. One more wrap in there. Trying not to trap as many fibers as I can. Then once I get that, go ahead and capture my stem there. Make a couple wraps in front and behind. And snip that out kind of blow it all back to just get them out of the way and then I'll make some tighter wraps now I can kind of brush out marabou make sure they're all going the same direction kind of evenly So you see how much like bulk that adds to the fly. You know, every time it pulses in the water, just this marabou just like really coats the whole fly, which is nice. And I got some uh, Wapsie Silly Legs. I think this is like the pumpkin, barred pumpkin. I'm gonna grab two strands for each side of the fly here. And I'm just gonna split them on my thread. And I'll tie in the side closest to me first. Make sure I'm just barely putting any pressure as I'm pulling them back. So they don't just like splay completely sideways. So if you're just kind of easy and then you make tighter wraps, they're gonna hold in there well, but they won't just like stick directly like 90 degrees out from the fly. Grab my other piece here, my other two pieces. And we'll tie in that far side. Same thing, just a little bit of pressure, keep them back. And I can start kind of cranking down on it. Now they lay, you know, with the fly as opposed to coming out at 90. Build up a little bit of a thread head here. I'm gonna take some of my Loctite, which is a very valuable tool in your tying streamers. Really keep everything together. Pull everything back. Get a couple of wraps of that super glue on there and then I'll do a quick whip finish. finish there. There's the back half of the fly. I'll snip out bottom tips of my silly legs. There's back half of the fly. And uh, going for another 860, but we're going in the size two now. So I usually always taper it. So about one size from front to back. Get back in there with my brown thread, starting way back behind the eye. Down the shank here. Give a little 
thread base so my wire doesn't slide around. Got that going. Now I'm gonna go with the small intruder wire. And make sure you don't use a pair of good scissors for this. Um, I got a pair of, uh, you know, wire dikes on my bench specifically for cutting wire. So. Got about a five, four inch piece of wire here. So I'm gonna start that just up past the halfway point on the shank and make some loose wraps to start and then I'll start tightening up as I work down the shank. And I wanna keep this not directly on top but just slightly off to the one side. And I do that so when I keep it off to one side it leaves a little room for the next piece when I bring it back over kind of lay next to it and then that way my loop is sticking you know up and down as opposed to kind of twisting that back fly so I've got that wire in there make some tight securing wraps if you do have a really big eyed hook you can go through the front eye I don't want to crowd anything here, so never really had a problem with anything coming undone with super glue. So now I got some uh, killer caddis beads. These are the large brown metallic. I'm gonna grab three of them out of here. And I'm gonna take my wire and feed these beads on here. Got those on there. Now I'm gonna take my portion of the fly that I just tied and I'm gonna feed that through the eye. Pull it down so it's right behind those beads and I'm gonna take my wire. I'm gonna go back through my three beads. So it makes a nice little loop. And kinda get it where I want. I'll make a couple loose wraps it's nice when your thread is kind of like centered in your hook to like make those like loose wraps to start because you're going to work down and kind of clean everything up anyway. So you can kind of measure it up. You know, I just want a little loop back here and then I can make sure that I like place it where I want going all the way down to where the beads are. Got that. Can make some tighter wraps going up. snip out my, my wire. Now I'm gonna take a bunch of Loctite and I'm gonna coat all my thread wraps here. So make sure nothing comes undone. Sometimes you gotta wait a sec for this to dry before you kind of start putting in other materials or else your other materials will stick to it. So I just clean it up with some wraps, make sure everything's really securely done up on the wire here, all the way down. So, kind of see that Loctite soaking into my thread. So, clean that up. Give that a second to dry. So a little trick I learned from uh, Kelly Gallup is uh, all the excess that you pull off your marabou, you know, towards the stem, the bottom of the stem. Now right, you save that and you take a small clump of it and, uh, you know, I think Charlie Craven also does the same thing on like his uh, gongas, uh, but it just makes a very slim covering to kind of like hide those bees and just kind of blend everything together. So. And take a little patch of both colors here and tie that in right next to the beads. Just 
kind of even it up. And snip that out. And I'll go for my brown. Uh, you can also pull it off your schlopping feathers as well, you know, when you're cleaning them up at the bottom. Sometimes that's even better because they're a little bit shorter. So now I'll get in there with my brown. Just a really slim little piece here right on top. I'll snip out these guys. See my super glue holding some stuff in there. Just kind of pull them out. Clean up my thread wraps here. There we go, hiding those bees just a little bit, but you can still see them. Clean up the shank here. I'll bring it up, you know, towards the towards the eye, and then we're gonna do another dubbing loop. I'm gonna bring my thread right to my beads back here and I'm going to tie in my other piece of schlopping first before I do anything else. Take my schlopping a little bit longer this time, that front hook, grab that tip, B down, and tie that in. I can snip or break out my tip. And then Set that back and then bring my thread up a little bit and we'll do another dubbing loop here. Same thing, working it back. Gonna rest that and get my dubbing set up here. So, still going in with that tan ice dub, UV tan. Pull it apart, even them up. Nice little clump there to start. Put a little dubbing wax on my thread to start. And then feed this in here. Same thing, slim, don't need a lot. Just enough to cover cover up the shank. And I'll spin my tool here, kind of keep everything away from other material. Let that spin up. I want to leave it fairly loose so you can kind of pull out some of these fibers. So same thing, going clockwise with my spins and not going to cradle my thread, just going to let it spin on the shank, make sure I don't trap anything. Capture my loop, snip out my excess, and I'll get my brush and I'll kind of rough everything up. Now I've got my schlop in here. Go ahead and start wrapping that up. Same thing, I like to wrap this without using the rotary, uh, just so I can place my wraps a little bit better and kind of pull the fibers back. You know, I can take my 
dubbing and kind of pluck it out with my whip finish or a bodkin or even a brush sometimes. Work that. Same thing, keep plucking some of this out. Stringing through there. And get one more wrap in there. And I'll capture it with my thread. Make a couple in front, a couple behind, and then snip out my stem. Thing, pull everything back, make a nice little ramp for my marabou going in next. So, again, can try and rough up some of that dubbing in there so that it comes through the, the schlopping. Now I'm going to grab another piece of my cream marabou, which I already had selected here. So a little bit longer feathers, fairly thick stem towards the tip, makes it a little easier to palmer everything. So grab that, capture it, work it back to my schlopping, and then snip out my puff up front. Same thing, V going down to the hook shank. Make sure my thread is kind of up behind the eye. And make some wraps. Again, kind of pulling out your marabou as you're palmering it. Holding them back. Make another wrap in there. Same thing, teasing all all those feathers out and get one more wrap in here hold my stem capture and snip out my stem there so a little messy go ahead and tease it out with my brush And then I want to make wraps over the marabou so that it all kind of pulls it back and then I have some room for my fish skull going on here. So there's that. Cleaned up a little bit. Snip out my stem a little further, a little closer. back and a couple more wraps go so everything's kind of pulling it back leaving room for my fish skull head want a little bit of base of thread so that I can put some super glue and it'll stick on there so last step here is taking my silly legs again grabbing two strands of each Now I'm going to take my other two silly legs here and uh, tie them in on the opposite side. Same thing, starting up by the eye, some loose wraps, gaining a little bit of tension as I work all the way to the marabou. 
and then I can start snugging it up. I'm going to take my super glue, coat my thread, and make a couple wraps. Pulling everything together, and then we'll do a quick whip finish. And uh, so now I'm going for the bait fish heads. So these are the small medium, which is good for fours, twos, and ones. And it's a uh, size eyes we got here. I think they're around like a four or five mil eye in the living eyes. But those come with the pack. So you get a nice little assortment of eyes there. They'll go with the heads. So that's gonna go on there like so. Sure, I got some room there, so that's good. I'm gonna take my super glue once again, kind of coat my thread head. And I'll mash this on there. Make sure everything's situated where I want it. I got enough room to stick some line through there. That's on there. So you can usually, you know, wrap in front if you've got enough room. You know, I feel like you're never really gonna lose the head if you're fishing it and you got a line in there. So I just super glue it and uh, that way I can kind of make a smooth transition going from the head to the body there. So Things in there, silly legs are pulled down. Good. I'm gonna pull back. I'm gonna pop my eyes on there. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of super glue, lay it down. Grab an eye. Then right down on there, get my fingertip. I'll make sure that you don't get super glue stuck. And the eye comes with your finger as you're pushing, pushing it down. So you got one on there. We'll go back and do the other side here. Sure, that's snug on there. Bait fish heads are really nice. They add some weight to it. They look super realistic. You know, partner or dealer for Fly Men Co. They make some great stuff. So if you've never tried any of their stuff, definitely give it a shot.